Hello everyone, and welcome to section 7.3, Logarithms and Logarithmic Functions. So the reason that we have logs is because they are the inverse of exponential functions. Instead of just switching x and y and solving for y, we write them as a logarithm instead. Logs have three parts. There's a base, an exponent, and an argument. Because this kind of goes back and forth with exponentials, these do sort of parallel each other. So in the log form, I've got log base b of y equals x. If I was going to write that as an exponential, I have a base of b for my exponent. I have an exponent of x. And then my answer is my argument. If there is not a b written, if there's not a base written, it's understood that it's 10. Sort of like the square root, it's understood as a square root if there's not a number outside of it. Similar idea. Logarithms are used with the Richter scale, with decibels. A lot of sciencey things are made possible because of logarithms. Rewriting is going to be huge. If you're ever stuck with a problem, particularly when we solve the more complicated equations, if you're ever stuck, you want to rewrite it as an exponential. Or if you're an exponential, rewrite it as a log. Typically, you'll write it into the exponential versus the other way around, but both are useful. So we see here we have our base and our exponent and our answer, which we're going to call an argument for log purposes. Base, argument, answer. So 2 to our exponent of 3 equals 8. The thing that is going to be very key with understanding logs and some of the log rules that we'll see later on is that logs are exponents. The log of a number, as we just saw, log base 2 of 8 equals 3. 3 is our exponent that makes 2 turn into 8. So logs are exponents. So rewriting, like I said, is going to be pretty helpful. So let's practice some rewriting. So identify your base. Base of your log is your base of your exponent. Your exponent is your answer, since logs are exponents. And then your argument is kind of like your answer from the exponential. Now, this seems intuitive. PCS 3 squared is 9. But sometimes when we're rewriting, they won't be as obvious and really just getting the basics of being able to rewrite from the logarithm to the exponential is good to have. If I'm looking at this one, log base 2 of 8 equals 3. I've got 2 to the third equals 8, and that's my answer. Let's look at another one. So this one just says log of 1 one hundredth equals negative 2. There's no number written there. Remember, like I said earlier, our common base is 10. So my base is 10 to the negative second equals 1 one hundredth. So there's no base written for a log understood to be 10. So when I'm asked to evaluate a logarithm, really I'm just saying, tell me the exponent of b that gives me y. So it does help to occasionally rewrite these for ourselves. So if I rewrite this, I'm thinking what power of 3 gets me 81, and in that case this one would be 4. Because 3 to the 4th is 81. In the next one, I'm looking at what power of 4 equals 2. Now since I do have a number smaller, I know I'm going to have a fractional answer. So the square root of 4 is 2, so I know my exponent has to be 1 half. If our base is larger than our argument, we know it's going to be a fraction. Or potentially, if our argument is a fraction, maybe our exponent might be negative. So just little things to kind of watch out for that you'll pick up on pretty quickly. 
So graphing these, since this is the inverse of the exponential, our range is now the all real numbers instead of our domain. And our domain is all positives or such as x is greater than zero. Our asymptote is no longer the x-axis, it's now the y-axis, or the line x equals zero. And our intercept, instead of being zero, one, it's one, zero. So it's pretty much just flipped over that line, y equals x, as compared to the exponential graph. The best way to graph these is going to be to rewrite it as an exponential and then plug in some values. So let's graph a function. So if I'm looking at this, I have log base 3 of x equal to y. So I'm going to rewrite it as an exponential, base of 3, exponent of y, argument of x. So if I make an xy table, and though we are so used to plugging in x values, because this is the inverse of our exponential, and we see our y is in our exponent, we're actually going to plug in y values. And the graph will make more sense that way too. So maybe let's plug in y of negative 1, y of 0, and a y of 1. So if I plug in negative 1, 3 to the negative first, 3 to the first power, put it in the denominator. Anything to the 0 is 1 and 3 to the first is 3. So at 1 third, so a little past 0, I'm at negative 1. At 1, I'm at 0. And at 3, I'm at 1. I know my asymptote is that y-axis, or that x equals 0 line. Since that line's already there, I don't really have to emphasize it can if you wish. Connect my points. And I have my logarithm. Our domain is x is greater than 0. And our range for these guys is the all real numbers. So that's our introduction into logarithms and graphing logarithms. Key thing, logs are exponents. And then we also have that idea that we can rewrite between the exponential form and the logarithmic form, which will come in handy a lot. So feel comfortable going between our log form to exponential or even back. So I'll see you in class and we'll look at this a little bit more.